you have questions, right? Okay. Yeah, what's my name, right? Again? Age. What's your sex. name? What's your name? Are we doing it now? Yeah. Oh. My name's Roy Gomez, and I'm 27 years old. A lot of people ask if it was on purpose or an accident, and I honestly don't know. I joined the army at, or at 20 years old in 2010. Um, I deployed to Afghanistan in 2012 to uh, the Kunar province, which is a pretty much mountain type atmosphere and that whole deployment was nine months it used to be a year like maybe two years prior but apparently uh, the army thought that it was too much for people to handle so they shortened it down to nine so my job over there was uh, the identifier or MOS was called 11 Bravo which was an infantryman and an infantryman is a combat arms job it's Basically what you see in the movies where the people go out and search for the bad guys, the ones more exposed to you know, gunfire, or bombs, or sniper, fire, what, all the above. After deployment, oh, it was, I was just turned 22, I believe. Um, I had all this money to spend just drinking buying shit that I didn't need to buy single soldier you know that's living in the barracks where barracks are free rent the only thing you had to pay for was internet um, I was you know it was a it was a long parting time because you, know, you just get back from deployment and everyone kind of looks up to you and you just came from these months and months of hardship so there's not really much asked of you aside from like showing up and that's basically what I did just drank my money away that's that's the sad truth you know you look back and I made thousands and thousands of dollars and I have nothing to show for it aside from some bad hangovers and some material some TVs if that no I met him I met Bacon um, um, coming back from deployment in 2012 Bacon decided to have a barbecue, invited all of us over, all the boys, just to, you know, obviously drink and eat. Um, I passed out really early. I think I passed out like at 8 p.m. around there. They were all still partying and, you know, getting wasted. Um, I woke up like around 3 or 4. I can't remember. My, my memory's fuzzy that night because it was, seemed like a big blur to me. Woke up to screaming. Woke up to Bacon screaming about losing a beer pong game. He was with our buddies Liggett, Larkins, and Shriner. I think someone else was there. I think her name is Victoria, but someone that I didn't really know too well. Um, Bacon got mad, and Bacon was known to uh, throw temp temper tantrums if something didn't go his way, especially if he was drunk. And he had some problems at home. Not really at home because his wife lived in San Diego while I was stationed in Fort Carson, Colorado. That's where we were all stationed. And I guess I came in at the wrong time. And like I said before, Bacon and I were inseparable. He was my best friend. Uh, I cared so much about him. I still do in a sense. But he walks into his room outraged about losing a beer pong game. And I walked in. And uh, Colorado's an open carry state. So that means you can carry a gun as long as you're not uh, or have a criminal record. I walked in. Um, Bacon stormed out from the beer pong game. Bacon walked into his room. And he whipped out, he pulled out his gun from his drawer, waving it around, saying, you um, get out of here before I shoot you. And I was like, oh, man, like I didn't. I didn't think he was serious, but I, maybe because I was still drunk, I should have taken him more seriously. Because I don't think that anyone in their right, you know, state of mind would say that to somebody else, especially one of their best friends. So I walked out, 
just uh, that might have been my fault because I still feel kind of guilty. Not guilty, but what if I walked out and he actually did take his life? I could have done something else. But I, I felt like I either had to mourn everybody else and then go deal with it or just deal with it at a time. And I, I, I don't know. I was, like I said, I was a kid. I didn't really know. I didn't have that. Every, all these factors played into it. So I told everybody else, and they were like, "What you know? What the fuck? Why is he grabbing his gun? You know, it was just a beer pong game." But I, that beer pong game, you know, set Bacon off because he had all these other built-up things into him. So it doesn't matter what it is; he could sneeze wrong, and it hurts his body. And it's like, no, you know, fuck this. Um, so I let everyone know. So we all came in there, not rushing in there, trying to muscle him around. Um, you know, we ended up trying to defuse it got physical and I ended up I was on the wrong end of the, the gun and uh, I got shot um, a lot of people ask if it was on purpose or an accident and I honestly don't know um, I don't know what his intentions were I don't know what he thought when he pulled out that gun but that part was on purpose that's what you have to think about he pulled out that gun might not have been intention, but he, he physically grabbed it and pulled it out and racked it, which means loaded the around into the chamber. So I, I, I don't know, but I know the gun was painted or pointed towards me and I uh, got hit. I got shot in the groin about half an inch from my penis. Um, so and uh, that's usually a kill shot in the groin. You know, the, the, the firearm he shot me with was a 45 hollow point, 1911. And uh, those stopping power, you know, that's what they're known for is the stopping power. And for some magical reason, it didn't give, uh, it didn't go through and through. It lodged into my body and went somewhere else. So, I guess you could say I'm very lucky. Um, <clears throat> so. The doctors didn't think I was gonna make it through the night. If they, if they thought if I did make it through the night, I'd be at least paralyzed from the waist down. So I ended up waking up, obviously. Um, I couldn't feel my feet, my legs. I didn't. Maybe maybe I was so weak, but you know that sense that's a par paralyzed. Um, had. Like ten different tubes in me. Like uh, my arms, my penis, my bladder, all these other regions where just in case something goes bad, there's another tube to compensate for that. I had staples from my groin up to about uh, above my belly button. I was like 30 staples. Um, I had to you know pee through tubes, urinate through tubes. I was there for like a, a, almost two months just laying in bed. Yeah, I, I, it was tough because I had this mindset of staying in, even though it's, it was a tough job. You didn't like everything that was said or you were doing, but a lot of jobs are like that. They really are. You have people or bosses that you don't agree with and it kind of sucks knowing that you were physically capable and mentally capable capable excuse me and getting it all taken away like in an instant like that fast it was taken away so it's a, it's a tough thing for a lot of people i would think and anything in life so after i got out i didn't i didn't do much i didn't i really didn't do much i was depressed i was bitter i blamed other people um, drinking I never did hard drugs or anything like that but drinking everything I did was legal <laughs> so yeah, I was just in a slump it, 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 for many reasons I came home and I was used to this certain way of life and now I'm in this whole different pace for all around different people I didn't have my brothers there anymore with me so yeah my mentality definitely changed so I got into MDS, Master of Defense System. Um, honestly, I've been an avid, avid uh, 
follower of uh, martial arts and self-defense for since I was a kid. I took classes as a kid, did wrestling in high school, um, had army combatives, whatever that's worth, <laughs> level one. And um, it was on an actual recommended YouTube video where it says, you know, suggestions for you, whatever the actual thing was. And I checked it out. And obviously you check out, usually when people check on YouTube, the more views it has, the more the more likely you're going to pick on that, right? So I checked that one out and I was like, whoa, this is really cool. I, I need to, I feel like I would love to learn this. So I checked, I le watched it, watched all Fred Mastro's videos, who has been so supportive with me. He, you know, he so, totally supports what we're doing right now. Um, and then I found, I looked up for seminars and unfortunately for MDS, it's a European based style, which means that they, a lot of, he doesn't live here in the US, he lives in Belgium, where his headquarters are at. And there's not very many people that can teach it here. Um, I'm luckily one of them now after months and months and months and months of training it. Um, but it, it was just a solid thing and and I felt like I felt I felt like it's it's applicable for everyday environment. Not don't get me wrong when I say this. Um, I'm not trying to get into a ring and fight for minutes and minutes and have a judge score me. It was a it was a thing where I'm like, okay, my 11 year old brother can pick it up and use it effectively if he pe keeps it up. Um, there's also this other point where people are like, well, it's so easy. Well, you just do it once and then you never do it again. Well. If you don't keep up with anything in life, you'll forget it. So that's how I got into it. Teaching, uh, teaching MDS. Uh, soon in the future, I'll teach other styles aside from national defense system. Um, I'm, I, I, my life isn't so flashy. It's getting there. It's getting better and better because I'm putting in the work. Um, I, I work at U-Haul part-time with my stepdad whenever he needs help, and I watch my, my nephew, because my, my sister is a single mom, and she needs all the help she can get, so I help her out whenever I can. Um, and eventually in the future, I'm gonna use my VA loan to open up my own school. So that's all, it's all, it's not a matter of if, um, if, it's just when.